Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and I'm coming to you today with a tag video. It just seemed like the perfect time to do this tag during March and March Mystery Madness. It is the Cozy Mystery Book Tag and it was created by Courtney, the Cortagonist, who is one of the hosts of March Mystery Madness and her friend uh, Books Are My Heart. They started a new Cozy Mystery Book Club a couple months ago and I believe they created this tag to introduce and usher in that new book club. So uh, I was tagged in the original video and I kind of decided I would save it and do it during March and now here it is the end of March and I'm just now getting it done but that's okay. So they came up with some really cute lead-ins for the uh, questions. So I am going to be leaning forward because I have them pulled up on my Kindle, which is right next to my phone, which I'm filming on. So here we go. The first one is location, location, location. Your favorite small town cozy. Well, I have to go with Moose County in the Cat Who books. Now, the first four or five books from the Cat Who series took place in the uh, urban areas of Minnesota. And after that, Quillerin and his cat moved 400 miles north of everywhere <laughs> or yeah something like that uh, they say that down below is 400 miles south of everywhere or no I don't know anyway wherever they live in Moose County is in the boonies apparently and it's northern Minnesota so uh, there's all kinds of fun towns pickaxe Mooseville um, I don't even know I can't even name them all they're so quaint and cute the characters are quirky and they just have fun sounding names to go with them so I am gonna go with all of Moose County and its surrounding and uh, all of its towns and surrounding towns that are in this series the cat who by Lillian Jackson Braun Okay, then the next one is, um, for the love of food, your favorite food-themed cozy. Well, of course, I have to go with the Hannah Swenson Baking Mysteries by Joanne Fluke. And I have here the Lake Eden Cookbook, uh, which, by the way, Lake Eden is a fun small town uh you know, as far as that goes to, as far as question one goes, but I don't want to use the same book for all the questions. Uh, although this book would probably fit, or this series would fit most of them. So the um, Hannah Swenson Baking Mystery series is definitely food themed. There are some wonderful recipes, not just cookies, but a lot of different types of recipes. And this is the cookbook. This was compiled after the first 13 or 14 books in the series. I'm hoping that she'll come out with a volume two cookbook um, with recipes from the later books um, and maybe that's in the works I don't know but this is a wonderful cookbook it's a wonderful series with fantastic recipes then the next one is um, man's or woman's best friend who is your favorite furry friend and I'm assuming that means your favorite furry friend in a cozy well I said this series can probably fit most of these questions so I have to mention Moisha which is Hannah Swenson's cat he's fantastic but for uh, my official answer to this question is Carl Kelly Flynn's Rottweiler in the Maggie Sefton knitting mystery series Carl is just a fun loving uh, very active uh, rambunctious dog and he's just adorable so I'm going with Carl then uh, the next one is law enforcement friend or foe name your favorite ally or enemy law enforcer well I now that I have finally read the first monk book I'm gonna go with Randy Disher he is Captain Stottlemyre's assistant or partner I guess they're partners um, but uh, well no I don't know because Captain Stottlemyre is a captain so he wouldn't really have a partner anyway they work together and Randy Disher is hilarious he is um, he doesn't have a whole lot to do in this first book I'm hoping that the author of the series the book series will give him more to do in future books but on TV I wish I knew the actor's name who plays him but he's fantastic so um, I'm going with Randy Disher who is one of the policemen in uh, the detectives in the monk series then we have, my Kindle has shut off, let me get it back up here. Then Idle Hands, favorite job or hobby to read about. So I'm going to go with my favorite hobby other than reading, which is, if I can find the book, 
which is scrapbooking. Uh, I have read the first book in the scrapbook mystery series by Laura Childs called Keepsake Crimes, and it's set in um, St. Louis, uh, not St. Louis, it's set in Louisiana, in New Orleans, and the main character owns a scrapbook shop. So this is a fun series. I haven't read another one, and it's been quite a while since I've read this one. I've kind of gotten... Um, I don't know. My eyes kind of glaze over when I look at all the cozy mysteries there are to choose from. I definitely want to read more of this series. I've been collecting them, and scrapbooking is my favorite hobby outside of anything book-related. And I guess technically it's book-related to scrapbooks. Okay, the next one is... Um, Elementary My Dear Watson. Favorite best friend or Watson-esque character. Well, I'm going to go with favorite best friend, and I'm going to drudge up a series from my uh, teen years and childhood, which is Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew had the best friends, uh, Helen Helen Corning, yes, and then Bess and George and uh, her boyfriend, Ned Nickerson, uh, and I think there were two other boys. Now I can't even think uh, Bess and George had, had boyfriends. Actually, there would be three other boys because they, you know, they went around in pairs. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, they, um, they were just a fun group of friends and always there when Nancy needed them to solve a mystery. So then the next question is, uh, one big happy family. Who is your favorite cozy family? Well, I've got a couple that I want to show you. Um, uh, the one that first came to mind, because I'm reading it right now, is the Danny or Danielle Ross Mysteries by Gilbert Morris. They have a very functional family. Danny has inherited the uh, private detective agency from her father. Uh, I say inherited. Her father's still living, but he's unable to work. So um, she has taken over the business and, uh, and is doing very well with it. And there are times, though, when she goes to her parents' home and they sit down to dinner and they're just a really nice family and I enjoy their family time. Uh, then a, a very blended family that... Well, See, when I lean against my shelves behind me, then things start falling. Um, now, if you are reading the number one Ladies Detective Agency series and you don't want to be spoiled for what happens in Precious Ramotswe's life as you go through the books, then just mute for just a second. Uh, I just wanted to, um, just to mention the, the family that she has put together throughout the series. Now, I'm in about book 10 or 11, and she got married a few books ago, and then just a couple of books ago, her and her husband have taken in uh, two orphans, uh, brother and sister, from the uh, orphan farm. And uh, so right now they are fostering them, but I have a feeling that they're going to adopt them. Uh, the a girl is in a wheelchair and she is totally, uh, I mean, she is what they call handy capable, I guess. That's I know that sounds kind of silly, but, you know, uh, she's very, very capable. She's a strong girl and has um, had to take care of her brother on her own for a lot of their lives. Actually, all of their lives. Um, and so now uh, Precious and her husband have taken them in. And uh, it's just a really, uh, a really touching uh, family uh, dynamic. Now, the little boy, he's having a little trouble accepting things. But I know that, um, I know that uh, our main character here will, she's got so much good common sense and wisdom. She's going to be able to get through to him and help him. And uh, it's just a really interesting family dynamic. And, and it's a, a, a lovely little family that they have put together in this series. Okay, so now you can uh, unmute your, <laughs> unmute your, uh, your sound if you'd, want, if you'd like. Okay, um, the next one is... Tis the season. Who? Oh, what is your favorite holiday-themed cozy read? Well, I was going to mention the... Uh, uh, I read two different cozy mysteries this past holiday season. One of them I don't own. It's Rest Ye Murdered Gentlemen by Vicki Delaney. There's three in that series, and they are all Christmas-themed. And I've read the first one, and it was a lot of fun. I will also mention The Christmas Cookie Killer by Livia J. Washburn. And this is the third book in the Fresh Baked Mystery series. And this was a lot of fun as well. This whole series is um, centered around a group of retired school teachers that all live together in this one house. And it's a lot of fun. So that uh, is my... 
I've got two answers then for that question. Uh, the next one, sometimes punny is best. Name your funniest, your favorite punniest title. This one was not hard at all, although there are so many fun punny titles in Cozy Mysteries. I could go on for days, but when I saw this one, uh, and I've already hauled this several months ago, um, this by far is my favorite. It probably has the worst cover of any Cozy Mystery I've seen. It's not a good cover. It's just plain, but the title makes up for it. This is Innocent Until Proven Quilty. How cute is that? It's number five of Annie's Quilted Mysteries. It is by, I believe it's by Jan Fields. No, Donna Kelly. I'm sorry. The first book in this series is by Jan Fields. This is by Donna Kelly. And I I just haven't seen a better, punnier title than Innocent Until Proven Quilty. Then the next one is Month to Month, Solving Mysteries Through the Fall, Winter, Spring, and Summer. What is your favorite seasonal cozy series? Well, this one came to mind because almost every one of these is centered around a holiday. This is the first one, Mistletoe Murder. It's by Leslie Meyer. The series is the Lucy Stone Mystery Series. And I've read the uh, St. Patrick's Day themed one. Uh, I own a couple of them uh, besides this one. I think I have the Mother's Day one and... Mm, I'm actually, that might be the only other one that I have. Anyway, uh, they're just a lot of fun, and uh, so far I've enjoyed what I have read, and they are definitely seasonal reads. Then I am supposed to, no, that's the last one, I'm sorry. I was getting ahead of myself. Um, the next one is special skills. Does your favorite amateur detective have a unique skill? Well, you've heard me talk about this one recently. I just finished it this week. Um, this series, The Patchwork Mysteries, published by Guidepost, is about a quilt restorer, and I just think that's fascinating. She uh, restores quilts, and there's mysteries surrounding some of these quilts, and she has to search through historical societies and uh, archives and libraries and just everything. It's just so neat. It's just a perfect series for me. I love genealogy and I, I just love this series so far. Uh, they are published, uh, they are they have different authors. This particular one is by Vera Dodge. Uh, Kristen Eckhart wrote the first one. It is called Family Patterns. Um, I don't think you'd have to read the series in order, um, but you know, it never hurts to do that. And um, they're just a lot of fun. And the um, the career of a quilt restorer, I think, is just very interesting sounding to me. Then the next one is, how do you get cozy to read a cozy? So how do you, uh, where do you go to spend your reading time? And um, I... I have about three different places. Well, I always read when I'm out and about. Anytime I have to sit, so I usually try to take a um, a book with me. And of course, I listen to audiobooks all the time. But when I'm actually going to sit down and read, if I want to stay awake and need to get a lot read, I have to sit at the dining table. And that way I can have my snack or coffee or whatever. And that's where I end up sitting a lot of the time. If I want to lean back and put my feet up, then really the best place for me is in our living room. We have a sleigh chair. It originally came from Ikea and it's very comfortable. It's like a chase lounge and I have it next to my cedar chest so I can set, you know, drink, snack and everything there. Now, we do have a recliner and sometimes I do sit in the recliner to try to read, but really... I'm going to be falling asleep pretty quick if I sit in the recliner. So that's not really my favorite place to read. Uh, it is a good place to sit and watch television, although I've been known to fall asleep watching something really good just by sitting in that recliner. So that's uh, comfortable, but not a good place to read. So the, the sleigh chair in our living room is my favorite uh, cozy place. Then uh, the next one is to recommend... Uh, a cozy mystery. So uh, all of the ones that I have shown you are books that I would and series that I would recommend. But one that I haven't shown you yet is the Southern Sewing Circle Mysteries by Elizabeth Lynn Casey. This is the most recent one. I just got this yesterday in Tampa at a used bookstore. It's called Patterned After Death. The first book in the series is called So Deadly and there's at least 12 of them now somewhere along those lines. Um, 
I really identified with this main character. Now, she's a librarian and, um, and a part of a sewing circle, and I'm neither of those things, but I identified with her because she moved to the South. She took a job as a librarian somewhere in the South. She was from up North somewhere, and uh, she had a hard time fitting in. She had a hard time being accepted because she was not a Southern girl. And I had some similar experiences when I left college and came to my first job out of college in Florida. I moved from Oklahoma to Florida, um, and I had a hard time fitting in as well. So similar things, but in a different setting. And uh, so I really identified with that. Now, another series I will mention is one that I just have started reading this week, and it is the uh, Cruise Ship Mysteries by Hope Callahan. Uh, the first book is called Starboard Secrets, and it's just super cute. And I identify with that because I used to work on a cruise ship myself. Now, I worked as a youth counselor when I was in my 20s, and this is about a 60-year-old woman who has never worked on a cruise ship, and she just on a whim took a job as an assistant cruise director. Her husband has left her, her kids are grown, and rather than sit alone by herself, you know, brooding, she takes this really exciting job and is on the high seas. So uh, she's also a Christian. So there's an underlying Christian theme and the books are very clean. And I am just adoring the series so far. And I would highly recommend it if you like that sort of clean type of mystery. Now, a lot of the Christian cozy mysteries don't even include murder. This one does. She no sooner stepped on board the ship off the gangplank than someone dropped dead and, uh, and it's suspicious. So she immediately set to work trying to, um, figure out who done it. And, uh, it's, it's just really fun. So those two, this one and that one, I would highly recommend. I don't have anything to hold up to show you, um, because the other one I have on ebook through, um, uh, on my, on my Kindle. So I'll, I'll leave a link below so that you can look it up on Goodreads or, or even on Amazon. They're on sale right now on Amazon. So, uh, if I remember, I'll put a link, well, maybe I'll put a link to Hope Callahan's website and from there, there's links and shows her different sales and all that. Okay. All right. So the last, I think the last thing is to tag some people. And uh, I have 10 booktubers I'm going to tag. If I think of anybody else that I should tag, then I will type you in uh, below um, and, I, and apologize in advance if I leave somebody off. But I liked, I don't, I just think it's fun to be tagged, and it's always fun to hear your channel name said out loud. So rather than say, I'm going to type them in down below, I'm going to say them out loud and, uh, and give you a shout out at the same time. So I am going to tag, of course, Di from Dice's 19 Hearts. She runs the Book One Cozies Club and is a big reader of Cozy Mysteries, so I know that she can have fun with this tag. Uh, and then also Catherine from Jane Catherine on Books. Both of them are hosts, co-hosts for March Mystery Madness. And then I'm also going to tag uh, Bookworm's Corner, uh, The May Cave, uh, Sarah from Not Just Romance Novels, who was also Much Mystery Madness host, uh, So I Read, uh, The Waiting Moose, uh, Linda Kleindenst, uh, Never Out of Books, and Rachel B. So I hope you guys have fun with this tag. And thank you, Courtney, for tagging me in the original video. And that's all I have for this video. I hope you are having a great day. Read a good book, and God bless you.